had problems finding good information online about how to properly connect the different pieces in your horn button, uh, check the link in the description where, for my blog post where I'll also provide some more information to what was happening and a link to the forums that really helped me out. So as you can see here, this is my steering wheel, kind of standard. Oh, by the way, I have a 68 Chevy C10. These are all the parts that you should need to connect the horn button and make the contacts. This first little piece is like the metal spring. It goes in and when you press down on the button, this is going to make contact with the column. Then there's this metal cup. Now this was actually part of my problem was that I had the wrong metal cup from the previous owner. As you can see here, the one on the left is shorter. That was for the 69 to 72 Chevy trucks. This one on the right is about an inch tall and a quarter inch taller than the short one and is used for the 67 and 68 trucks. With that shorter cup, I just wasn't able to, to get the button on or I wasn't able to press in enough. So then this bushing, bushing space or whatever it is with the three screws that kind of goes in those holes and lines up and this lines up with the holes in the spring and then screws into the steering wheel. Now as I'll talk about in a second here, I also needed some extra space in mine. which I'm showing right here. I created these little spacers out of, you know, you, when you buy a package of something at the store and it has that crappy plastic packaging, I guess, that it's hard to cut into and cuts you. So I made these spacers. This one, this bigger piece goes in between that metal spring and the metal cup. And then these small little washer ones are gonna go on the other side of that pink piece which I'll show just shortly. If you raise the pink piece, you also need to raise the cup up from the spring. That's why I needed both types of spacers. I created two sets just because I wasn't sure how much space I would need. It turns out I only needed one set, uh, which is kind of remarkable that that little extra space made the, the button work properly. So as you can see here, I have a set of those plastic washers tacked onto the bottom of the pink piece. I just use one little dab of super glue just to keep it in place when I put it in there. I don't really want it stuck on there in case I never need to do some modifications. So in be behind like the metal spring and this cup, like the metal spring makes contact with a piece of metal on this turn canceling cam, which comes out of this little hole I'm pointing to here and it also makes contact with a, a piece in the actual steering column, which I'll show shortly. Uh, in order to put this together, you put the spring in first, then you have this little metal rod thing that goes inside this plastic spacer. You're gonna push down on the spring, and I showed a different angle here because I was having problems with one hand. Basically, when you push it in, that little plastic spacer has a ridge around it that kind of clips in <clears throat> excuse me, to the shaft. And I'm just making sure it's in there so it's not going to easily pop out. Don't try and push it in too hard. And you can see it pushes in real easy and kind of acts almost like a button. Now here is the steering column. That metal part on the back of the canceling cam pushes that little button that's on the pieces that are attached to the steering column. So when you put the steering wheel on, it lines up, which I believe I'm going to show here in just a second. Oh, I'm showing how the canceling cam works. So it cancels your, your uh, blinkers. And here's where I show on the steering wheel that that shaft coming out of the canceling cam right here 
is going to line up with the large hole that's in your steering wheel and it's going to poke through and hit that metal spring that you first put in the steering wheel. Alright, so then once you get it on there, the next thing you'd put on is your washer and your nut. Now, I'm going to leave those off for a second. And oh, when you put this cup on, make sure that this little slot is at the top, otherwise, your hoarding button would be upside down. Some buttons may not matter, but uh, as you can see on the button, I have this little slot in the rubber gasket that fits right in there. Let's see if I can line it up. I don't have the horn hooked up because I have the previous owner had the horn hooked up to this choke button, but you can still hear the old horn relay if I hook this up correctly. So if I push the button, see if you can hear it. Okay, it was triggering just a second ago. There it goes. Did you hear it? So it turns out uh, that one little thin plastic spacer seems to have worked. Um, you can hear the relay trigger. And it's happening every single time I press a button.